Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Tech with KG. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Q90T firmware update 1462. We're going to find out what changed in this update and whether or not it's worth it to even download it. So I wanted to state a couple of things before we get into that. The actual way we get these firmware updates is very convoluted. Some of the times we have to go through the actual website itself and it's not available through the TV to download right away. That has to change. Another thing is the way that this information is being supplied to us or lack of information. There's no public knowledge whatsoever on these updates. There's no change log and it's a guessing game. And for a company of that standard or really any standard in 2021 to do that, it's just bad business. Consumers care and they have a right to know what's been changed. They shouldn't have to run their own tests and guess what changed like I have to do. And really how hard is it to have a community manager or somebody post something about it on a public forum or their own forum or even just an update on Twitter about what's changed. Or better yet, why can't they just tell us we know about this issue, we're going to address it in another patch. Like, just tell us. Tell us you are aware of this and that you're going to fix it and we would be happy to wait. We would be okay with waiting. Instead, we have a lot of anxiety about this TV now and we never know if the issues are going to be fixed. It's like rolling a dice. Like, will it be fixed? There's a lot of variance and there's a lot of randomness that goes into buying a TV in the first place. First, we have to worry about the panel lottery itself and, you know, dead pixels, things like that. It's so much that goes into buying a TV. Like, now we have to worry about firmware issues and actual software problems. This is something that is not acceptable. And we need more clarity and more transparency from any company, not just Samsung. A lot of companies do this. And many tech manufacturers are really out of touch with this. Just give us some patch notes for a change, please. All right, with that rant out of the way, let's dive into this update. First thing I wanted to test was the dimming bug, and I can confirm that it is still active from all my testing that i did i can confirm that yeah it's still active sadly and i had multiple people actually tell me that this is still active as well the dimming bug takes about six minutes for it to appear and there's times where it actually doesn't happen at all and it's really random um, but when it does happen it usually takes about six minutes sometimes you know the dimming bug happens Sometimes it doesn't, and it's really weird. So yeah, dimming bug, definitely active. The second thing I tested was the picture quality in game mode, and I can report back that there's nothing changed really at all. I didn't notice any difference in the local dimming or the colors. Everything seemed to remain the same, and I still have the same results. I think that your best option is going to be playing outside of game mode if you can. If you can't, then you're going to want to play with Game Motion Plus on as I think that has the best colors. And I also think that that solves a lot of the issues that we run into with game mode like inverse ghosting and scan lines. Which brings me to the next thing, scan lines. I tested to see if this was still present in game mode. And I did everything I could to try to replicate this issue. To be honest with you, I just couldn't get them to appear. With game mode on, VRR on, VRR off, game motion plus on, game motion off, I didn't get any scan lines to appear. That's not to say that it might not happen or it will happen for you. I have seen scan lines before and I have gotten them to appear, um, but this time I just couldn't get them to appear. Take that as it is. Uh, which brings me to inverse ghosting. It's the same sort of situation. I had this show up in a video that I did with Call of Duty at 120 hertz. While I was doing the gameplay, didn't really catch it. Uh, but if you do slow down the gameplay, uh, you will see inverse ghosting in my video. And I tried to test it today, and I couldn't get inverse ghosting to show up at all. I even slowed down video to look, and there was no inverse ghosting whatsoever. 
Now take this with a grain of salt because I've heard issues that people are still dealing with this after the patch, uh, but most of these are going to be outside of the US. And I haven't heard from too many people in the US yet about inverse ghosting, but could be a problem still for your set. Now to be clear, inverse ghosting hasn't been an issue for me recently at all. For me, I didn't really notice a huge change. I didn't notice inverse ghosting at all. Testing it with Game Motion Plus off and on, uh, I got zero inverse ghosting when testing it after the firmware. Just going to note that your results may be different. The next thing I tested was Amazon HDR not working. And it turns out this was fixed, but it has nothing to do with the firmware update. This is uh, simply an app update, so just update the app and you will have HDR10 Plus again. Um, I wanted to say that, so let me be clear, this has nothing to do with the firmware update. Just update your Amazon app and this issue will be fixed. Alright, next thing we tested was the local dimming high, medium, and low on movies. And I can report that there is no dramatic differences here. Nothing changed. After that, we tested intelligent mode and intelligent mode is something that I feel that they did change. I think the algorithm has been changed as I saw better results than I did before. It's far from perfect and I do think that it's usable on SDR. In fact, I'm thinking about using it for SDR going forward, but in HDR, it still seems to oversaturate a little bit and over sharpen. So we wanna take a look at SDR, but not HDR for intelligent mode. And I think this could be really good for somebody that doesn't feel comfortable setting up their TV with the picture settings and they have fluctuations in their environment with lighting. That might be a good candidate for intelligent mode. The next thing that I tested was HGIG and the presence of tone mapping. To get you updated on this issue, basically HGIG would still have tone mapping even though it's not supposed to. Sadly, nothing changed and it's all the same. Tone mapping still present with HGIG active. So definitely a disappointing result as it should be turning tone mapping completely off, but it still does not do that. Next thing I wanted to test was HDR turning off when you switch in and out of game mode, or even when ALLM auto low latency mode is on, your HDR would turn off suddenly when you switch in and out of game mode. This shouldn't be happening and I can report that this is now fixed. I don't know if this was fixed via the actual console because of the Xbox Series X issue. Maybe that was the case or if it was the TV issue and it fixed with this firmware update. I can't confirm that because I haven't really touched my Xbox in weeks. So I don't know what fixed it. So to wrap it up, what did this update really change? What did it fix? Well, if it didn't fix the things that I think it fixed, then it turns out it didn't fix anything. Because I'm not sure if the Xbox fixed that HDR issue or if it was the firmware itself. I also can't confirm the fixing of scan lines or inverse ghosting as this is something that I really didn't have before. Even though I did not notice any scan lines this time, doesn't mean that they won't come back. So to answer your question, should you update? That really depends. I think that updating won't really hurt in this sense. I didn't notice anything get worse. Um, so if you want to update, it should be safe to do that. But don't expect any huge changes as I don't think a lot really changed. Which kind of brings me back to what I was talking about earlier. There's a lack of information given to us, so we can't really say what has been changed. Like I said, it's just a guessing game. It's anybody's guess. So if you find something that I missed, please let me know in the comments. Did I miss something that was added? Did I miss something that was fixed? I would love to know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me, sticking with me through all of this. Uh, from day one, you guys are so great. I can't say enough how much I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos, check the links on the left. Have a great day and I hope to see you in the next one.